Oh. Nice report, Dick. I just was looking at that in the email. Mm -hmm. That's great. I'm not sure if the news is as good, though. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> You can't be helped about that at this particular moment in this little, yeah, that's okay. Glad to see everybody here. Luba, you got my text. Thank you. Dan and Linda figured out there was some confuffle about the time. <laughs> so, well, got it fixed. Hi, Betsy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's you and me, huh? Well, you and me and Dick and Luba and Dan and Linda. And oh, Cindy. there they are. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is going to be a quick meeting today. Great. Hi, Marilyn. Did you see the email I sent you with the uh, ops team info? Sometimes Marilyn can't be on audio on these calls. Not she's just listening. Not sure that's the case now. <laughs> Hey, we're getting closer to a quorum. Hey, Tom. And there's there's Justin, our 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 new and future board member, I think, right? Yes. And Cindy. And Cindy as well, is that right? Yes, exactly. Welcome, Justin and Cindy. We're gonna have so much fun to show you how much fun this is. <laughs> <laughs> Whippy. <laughs> there you go, Doug. <laughs> I had a little uh, cocktail uh, just before, so I, I recommend it. Highly <laughs> recommended. <it> before <laughs> I've seen people sipping on wine like this is volunteer work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, just one, 
I'm going to the Patron restaurant afterward for Mexican and a gigantic margarita. A gigantic All right. Margarita. <laughs> All right. That, anybody who wants to join me is welcome. Where, where is that, Tom? <laughs> 29th Avenue uh, near um, near Trader Joe's. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll take a rain check. <laughs> which one is it, Tom? What's it's, the name? It's called Patron. It's an excellent name. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's on the corner of 29th Avenue, and of course, it's which is congested with construction, and this side street where Trader Joe's is. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, very, 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 very it's good. Fisk. Food. Fisk, Fisk, Fisk. Linda's right. Yep, yep, yep. Fisk. Okay, <laughs> that, that sounds about right. Yeah, one street off of uh, Ray, essentially. Right. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, we're good. We can start. Woohoo. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's enough of us. Um, Todd told me our minister, Dr. Reverend Todd Ickloff. Wait a minute, Reverend Doctor or Dr. Yeah. Reverend. <laughs> uh, it's too bad this stuff is recorded. I just need to say. But anyway, um, will not be joining us today. So I have agenda updates to make. Like we won't be hearing from Todd. He's got, a, he had a conflict with a pretty important church, piece of church business. So, uh, so we are called to order. That's for Marilyn. So when she's looking at this later, <laughs> I'm not good about the votes either, Marilyn, but we don't have much on the way of votes today. So it'll be simple, hopefully. Um, so back to the, chin, that's number one, number two, or the tonight's agenda. We're not going to hear from Todd. So I'm changing that guys, item four. If you're looking at your agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I failed to put the third bylaw motion request down there in item eight, looking for volunteers to read, um, read these out at the annual meeting. So, and I put Memorial Garden, seven principles spaced on public relations. So there's actually three bylaws that need to be read out uh, in June at the annual meeting. So looking for three volunteers. So that's the only... Updates I have to the agenda. Are there any others? Um, yeah. Um, let's see. I, I, I've, and I'm trying to place where these would go. I think under adding something under five as five C. Okay. And um, this, I'm calling this strategy for the annual meeting since okay. the or order of business or the agenda didn't seem at least to my knowledge didn't meet the 14-day notice and we need to talk about a strategy to deal with that if in fact um, we didn't get a notice out on the order of business and I think there's a, a workaround um, it's a little bit awkward but I think we can work around it and this kind of has to do with item nine also, which is a, a discussion of the Jacksonville, Florida item, because it would fit into that kind of discussion. So I would add a five, a five C having to do with a, a strategy for dealing with the um, lack of order of business in the notice uh, for the annual meeting, unless there was a notice that went out and I missed it. Somebody help me here on that. I'm not really sure what you're talking about, order of business. Well, it's essentially an agenda, and it's required in the bylaws that the notice require an order of business. And that would be what we've typically used as, an, as the agenda so people know what to expect. And for me, helping people write a script to have a, the items for where, where their item is and you know what it's numbered in the, in the process of the meeting. And we, you know, we had a meeting on May 8th to develop the agenda for the annual meeting, but then I never saw a, a finished product. Okay. So I think we need to, to discuss how to proceed. I think you're talking about we need a, an, an item on Article 2 in the annual meeting, and we need to propose that today. Is that right? Yes, well, that's actually item 9 in the agenda, Dick. 
technically. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. 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 It says Jacksonville, Florida, because I didn't know what it was about, and I still don't one hundred percent know what it's about. Yeah, Jacksonville, Florida. They wrote a letter about their. We can do, we can, we this. can discuss that. Yeah. Um, and so we got uh, it. The other, in other words, we got it. So let's put it yeah. on the agenda. So thank you, Dick. Um, um, anything else for the agenda? Um, yeah, under item ten, on the unfinished business. Um, there was an email that I sent out to the board after I tried to um, adapt the email policy to the um, policies and procedures. Um, I noted there was a four word phrase having to do with a non-compliance officer that seemed inconsistent with the other modification we made. And I think we need to vote to either leave that non-compliance officer statement in at the very, uh, toward the end or exclude. Exactly. Okay. I put it on here. That's good. Thank you. So that yeah. we can, we can vote on that one. Uh, that's fairly straightforward. Anything else? Yeah, the other one is good. I'll put down and it might be a lengthy one and it might be controversial. Um, I would like to have an item there to actually rescind the email policy uh, and reconsider at a later date. Um, but so I'd like to have that on there. We make a motion. We either we either do it or we don't do it, and there you know we can talk about it at that time. It does. Why, why bother amending it if you're gonna? We're gonna talk about rescinding it, but well, <laughs> well, because if you don't rescind it, then you know we want to have the wording, um, you know, the way okay. the way that we want it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I wonder how you spell rescind. <clears throat> Okay, anything else? Nope, that, that's got me covered, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, moving along, let, uh, next item is to uh, approve mm -hmm. and or mm -hmm. amend our meeting minutes from April. I've got, I think I'm on now. Mm. There's Marilyn. Yeah, I think I figured out why I was having trouble. Um, I know at the top there's um, of the pages, I've got some page number uh, typos and also the date needs to be April 24th on all the pages at present. Okay, well, that's good. When the editor signed, the reporter found it, good. Thank you. Any other things to be updated in the minutes from April? Move to approve. Seconded. And any other discussion? Hearing none. Minutes approved. Thank you, Marilyn. I'm not going to hear from Todd, so moving on to me. And I'm going to need some help from everybody that was at the... The first thing I wanted to talk about was our Budget Summit 2 update. Maybe everybody that's on this meeting now was there. Can't recall exactly, but for the record, wanted to provide an update on that Budget Summit Actually, Dick, maybe you should do that since you just finished putting your report together. Mm. Um, the so the bottom line is we had a budget summit too, which means right. that our pledges fell short, right? That's the of our our proposed budget. But uh, I think they were a little bit ahead of last year. Is that correct? Uh, I don't remember that. Is that yeah, true? I, I, I seem to remember that we got an email from Rebecca saying that the pledges this year were about ten thousand dollars more than last year but they needed to be more like $40,000 more or something like that, like $30,000 mm -hmm. Right. To, to, to pay Todd's full, full, full salary. Which is the main kind of gap in the budget, I guess. Yeah. No. yeah. Uh, although I did notice that this budget, this last year had a, a pretty large item for, a line item for donations and that well, many of those donations did not happen. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Need to find out from Rebecca if those were bequests or what donations the church is making or were being no, made. No, that that income donations to the church that are not pledges. Oh, no. oh, oh. and okay. they that they were thirty thousand dollars budgeted and only like seventeen thousand has happened so far. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, that may be requests which can vary a lot. I don't know. Right. 
This is an item that would be on this agenda or order, order of the business. I don't know where it, where right. it falls, and that would be, you know, however you guys are going to present it, ultimately uh, present it, and then it'll be voted on um, and or amended if anybody wants to amend it. So um, that's part of the order of business issue. Yeah. So bottom line, I guess the budget summit two happened and a balanced budget was prepared and approved by the group. I guess that's uh, yeah. somewhat obvious, but should be stated. And that it balanced budget is what will be presented to the congregation, as Tom just alluded to. I think Dick and I will probably do that together uh, on June 9th. Yeah, I think that's what was in the uh, draft agenda that we talked about on May 8th was one was uh, we used to do it as a presentation uh, or a treasurer's report and this one I think was combined into a treasurer's report and um, introduction of the budget so um, however you had that agenda on the 8th of May that seemed like agreeable to everybody that was there right and how we've done it the previous year or two when I was the treasurer. So we have a, we actually- yeah, The balanced budget is not the same as a desirable budget. Nope, not at all. <laughs> not so necessarily. What, but yeah, what, not necessarily, right. We'll right. have to make that clear. But. Yes. Yeah. And actually they're separate items in the um, mm -hmm. agenda for the June 9th. Mm -hmm. There's a section for reports, um, including the treasurer's report, Dick that thing that you just sent to Rebecca, I think, or to the board. Yes. And then there's a budget review. So treasurer's report is more of an annual look back. Here's how things did last year in my characterization of it as treasurer. And then five <laughs> budget review and presentation. Actually we have, oh no, 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 just the budget review. We present it and then we have a motion on it. So mm -hmm. yeah, on June 9th. Okay. Um, Anything else anybody recalls or wants to bring up about the budget summit? Nope. Okay. 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 Look. Oh, here's a big one. Sort of big. And it kind of, uh, which is a call for UUA delegate volunteers. Who knows who G when GA is? I bet Dick knows when it is. When yeah. is it? Well, latter part of June. Like 21st to 23rd or something like that are the big business meetings right so i so I, I, tom asked me to be the he called it the team leader for the delegates okay and then he's asking people who might, might want to be delegates to let rebecca know um but we need some mechanism to actually decide who's going to be the delegates in case we there are more people who want to be delegates and are authorized I'm not sure how many are authorized right now. Eight. Hmm? Isn't it eight? It's a pretty large number. Well, I mean, but that could be uh, outdated because yeah, I think, I, I, th I think it's like 50 for every, uh, maybe for every 50 members, you get one additional uh, delegate. I think, I think maybe you get two delegates minimum or something like that. Uh, but no, maybe it don't. I think like the Southern Church I'm part of, Saltwater Church, I think it has a little less than 150 members and has only three delegates. So, uh, so basically, you I think you take uh, you have at least one delegate, and then if you have uh, maybe more than 50 people, you get an extra one or something like that. The, okay. the last number that I heard from Rebecca and or Todd was some where between five and seven, depending on how she actually decides what the reportable membership is. Right, and uh, I'm, I'm guessing more like six or something. Okay. You, you say if, you, if you took like, if you had, suppose you had 300 members divide by 50, you get six. Uh, in, in addition, uh, a minister can be a delegate, except they wouldn't allow Todd to be a delegate, because it's a yeah. 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 But a, an RE director could be a delegate too in some cases. Well, what um, one of the things you suggested, Dick, was in the email exchanges that we're going back and forth about this was whether um, our whether the board members should be 
uh, would volunteer to be, or any of us would volunteer. And I did volunteer to Rebecca, and then you put out a notice to all the members of the church saying, uh, inviting people. So I, I don't know what the response has been. Yeah, I haven't heard from Rebecca, but but that, uh, you know, historically it's been kind of difficult to be uh, a delegate. You had to go to the GA, you had to be up on the business. It's very easy this year. You, you don't have to even pay any money. You just have to register. Uh, you don't have to, uh, you can pay money, but for a business delegate, you can just register for as a business delegate, and then uh, that authorizes you to vote. And I, I know how that's done. Once you've registered, I can tell everyone just you have to go through something called a delegate portal, which will allow you to vote. And, and there will be a limited number of votes, and I, I can keep track of the votes. I think there's like usually. I think the votes that are important are like on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And there'll be like, you could vote one time in the afternoon after the morning business session is over. And you may have one, two, or three votes each time. Uh, it may be on the whole of Article 2 or on one of the amendments of Article 2. It may be on an actual immediate witness or a business resolution, something like that. And and I can keep people attuned of what the votes are about. And if they want to go to the business sessions by Zoom, they can, but, but you don't have to. So besides yourself and Tom, has anybody, are you aware of any other volunteers? I'm aware of one person who wants to be a delegate. Came no, to me. No one has told me so far. Yeah. Okay. I have to Rebecca. All you have to do is contact Rebecca and she will register you, um, you know, each individual. And then the way that uh, it was described as, as described by Dick was that we, he would, we would have a text group and he would text us. Um, now you have between now and eight o'clock Pacific time or whatever it is in order to vote on these, on these issues so that we kind of whether we voted one way or the other wouldn't be up to Dick, but, you know, but yeah, and in fact, I, I could put together a schedule beforehand that would tell you the times you could vote with almost certain times. There may be, if, if a session finishes early or runs late, the time, the voting times may be a little different because you can't vote on a, an issue until that business session is closed. But in, but these, the business, uh, the business, this delegate portal is held open to eight, no, 11 o'clock Eastern time or eight o'clock Pacific yeah. time. And so uh, and usually these sessions will be over by mid to later afternoon. So you got, you got a pretty good time window on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And, and I, and if anyone, if anyone just to, wants, to, wants to vote the way I, I tell you, you can just do that. If you want to do your own research, you can do that too. It, uh, or if you're, again, the, in the business sessions, there will be pro and con statements, which may be interesting, but you don't have to listen to those. And, you know, I talked to Todd after the service uh, last week and, you know, I said, what's the use? It's probably going to get, you know, passed anyway. And he said, well, a use would be to minimize the number of favorable votes. That would be a statement. Right. Yeah. If, so if, see, see, if it so, passes yeah. by 86 percent. Like the one thing they did last year, they'll say, "Well, we have a mandate. If it barely passes, that will that will give them less of a mandate." And it's possible it's possible that it won't pass. So far, uh, I've heard of quite a few congregations who voted very strongly against it, and, and either instructing their delegates to vote against it or giving delegates a good idea of where their congregations stand. Of course, so, these, these congregations, though, are ones that have people in them who are against it, and they've actually argued about these things. A lot of congregations, they don't even know much about it, and no one's really argued about it, and they'll probably just go along with it. So, okay, I know it's potentially out of order, but whatever. So since we're talking about UUA delegates, and we're trying to, like, potentially get volunteers, right. we only have two. Um, Terry Anderson's also interested in being a delegate. So if we have five or six, then we have okay. three um, people that will go. But since we're talking about it already and we're looking for volunteers, can we go ahead and skip ahead to item nine and um, discuss what this Jacksonville, Florida measure is? Well, how about if we just ask, is there anyone on the call right now who is considering being a delegate. 
and wants okay. to get together for a meeting on it, things like that. That's fair. That's fair. Is Anybody anyone else here interested? who's interested? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm willing. You say this is the twentieth through the twenty second. Well, the the voting is the. <clears throat> I think it's like twenty first to twenty third, but if if you're interested, we'll 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 get together in a Zoom meeting ourselves beforehand, and we'll talk about the details and what the issues are. Like there are four different amendments, what things you might be interested in voting on, things that maybe you don't care about. You don't have to vote on everything. <clears throat> so I I would schedule a meeting beforehand among those who are interested. June so, June June twentieth is a Thursday, and if it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, that it's the twentieth, twenty first, and twenty second. Okay, that, that would be the day. I just pulled up my calendar. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm willing to help out with that if if uh, needed. Oh, oh, okay. Then you need to contact Rebecca and let her know that you're volunteering. Right. I will. Thank yeah. Right. I, this is Marilyn. I'd be interested. Marilyn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, with Dick being the team leader to tell us what you have from now when we get a text until eight o'clock this evening, that gives us a big window or, you know, a workable window. And that was what I was concerned about is how do I, how can I get a workable window? So I think we got on top of that with Dick's help. Yeah, thanks, Dick. Right, right. Okay. And some of your, we can put together a preliminary group right now and vote to accept them. Uh, and others, others could join later too. Okay. Did you have something to add, Sue? Sue, you're on mute, or else your microphone isn't working. Susan, oh. she said, "Go ahead." Oh, okay. we, don't, we don't need the board to appoint delegates. It's no, no. It's strictly administrative through Rebecca. Right. We don't need a vote or anything, Dick. I don't think on this. Well, normally delegates should be authorized by the board, and we could authorize. Rebecca to just accept anyone who applies up to the legal number, but but we we, we do need some mechanism as a board to authorize delegates. Okay, and, and, we, and we should do that today. Yeah. Okay, custom, custom in the past, and that is prevalent if we don't have a rule about it, is that we had never had a board action. So yeah. well, I, I propose that we uh, authorize Rebecca to uh, accept. Anyone who applies to be a, a delegate uh, up to the legal limit, who's, who's a, a member of uh, UUCS. Second. And, and, and who maybe agrees to keep in contact with the rest of the people here, you know, like myself and others who are. So we have sort of a, a team, a communications team. If they would, I think we don't want to serve a lone wolf here. <laughs> You know, so we'd like to sort of keep in communication with each other. So I authorize her to accept anyone who wants to be keeping communication with the others here. They can vote their own way, but we should be in communication with each other. Any discussion for the motion? Okay, let's take a vote. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Marilyn, one, two. I don't see Dick's hand. What were you saying? Your hand up, Dick. Yeah, of course <laughs> it should be up. I know how. Okay, it's unanimous. Oh, here, there. Yeah. There's your hand. <laughs> okay, there's my hand right. <laughs> it's easier on camera just to do this. Right, right. Yeah, but we can do both. <laughs> can I ask? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go for oh, okay. it. Just for future, I will. Um, I'll have a chat with Tom Mosier later. About you, you from everything you said, I'm considering it. It's a very busy time for me because I'm leaving just right about then, but I would okay. like to, I'd okay, like to great. have a voice. Okay, great. Thank you. Sounds like we're going to have a full slate, Dick, at the okay. at GA. So, okay. per, or very close. Thank you, Sue. Okay. That would be nice because and, and Todd is right. The, the, the more no votes, the, the better. It, it takes two thirds. And my feeling from the last year's votes is that uh, it'll probably pass by close to three quarters, but th th there is a trend against it, and I don't know how how widespread that trend is, and it could go down if that trend is wider than many of us many of us suspect. Uh, okay, did you want to talk about the Jacksonville thing? No, no, no. I changed my mind, Tom. It, <laughs> it, 
<laughs> I think what we we got our we got our um, UUA delegate thing covered, so that's fine. Yeah. So let's get through the rest of the items real quick, and then because that's probably yeah. one of the more difficult to explain potentially. Um, so let's talk about this little hiccup with the essentially the date for publishing the agenda is what it sounds like you're discussing, Tom, or concerned about. Yeah. Which, by the way, I sent it to Rebecca today so that she could get it out. Um, okay. Here's what we're probably going to have to do, what I'm suggesting doing, since it didn't meet the 14-day notice, which was last Sunday, mm -hmm. that, that we... Um, that we vote at the beginning of the meeting, um, have it raised by the moderator to suspend the rule that an order of business uh, needed to be published by that date because we did have the date and the time covered. So the meeting date and time is covered. What we lacked was the order of business or the agenda if, and we can, Suspend the rules with um, a two-thirds vote. I think that will, um, I think that will be acceptable. It's, it's a marginal workaround, but it's the only way I can see that we can have a meeting. Except ignore it and move ahead. But well, yeah, okay. um, you know, I'm the parliamentary advisor. I can't say ignore it. I just try to help you figure a workaround. So that's fine. Do that at the beginning of the meeting. Just be sure to say, oh, we missed a. A deadline by you know six days, and here's our workaround. Okay. Deadline in the bylaws. Okay, so we are going to have the agenda coming out very soon. I sent it to Rebecca today. She asked me for it. So okay, so then I can prepare the script because a number of people have been asking me, um, where do I fit into this meeting? <laughs> That's that'll help me out. So that is good. Um, and uh, let's see. I think that is. Yeah, that would be that would be it. If the board um, kind of if, if there's no objection from the board, that will be the strategy. I guess would be the thing that I'd ask you to ask the board that we implement that strategy. You want a motion, or just your acknowledgement if every, if everybody agrees or nobody disagrees. Any discussion about this strategy? folks on the board, the strategy for working around missing a deadline to publish the agenda for the annual meeting is to mm, essentially get the congregation to acknowledge and vote on that at the beginning of the annual meeting. Is that a fair summary, Tom? Yep. That's our plan. Good plan. Stay, okay. <laughs> stay in compliance with the rules <laughs> yep. as best we can. <laughs> Okay. How's that, Tom? Does that feel like mm -hmm. good cover? Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that sets me up. I'll have the agenda so I can finish the work I've been working on for the other folks. And it also gives me the go ahead that in the beginning, that'll be something that the moderator will do. Okay. Awesome. You. you bet. Dick, anything else to report on from treasurer position? We've already talked about the budget summit. Is there any other? I'm actually moving on to the next item on the agenda. To the treasurer's report? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I sent out a draft treasurer's report to the board a little while ago, and I've been in communication with Rebecca about that. Uh, now, is this the annual, essentially? Uh, yeah, it is yeah, the annual. Yeah, and, and I asked her for the latest numbers. So she sent me the latest, like, income and expense numbers through today. Uh, and so the, uh, the expenses look fairly normal. Hang on just one second. Okay. Guys, okay. do you guys want to look it up in your email or would you like me to share screen so you can Maybe look at it? Maybe you should it? share the screen for people. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, here we go. How's that? It, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, because others could see it too. Right. And you don't have to dig it out of your email. So right. here you go. Is it big enough? You need me to make it a little yeah. bigger? Right. That's okay. No, so, right. so it's, yeah, so that, that looks really good. So the I can I, even I can read it. See? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So it's an incomes part, an expenses part, and if you look at the pledges, um, you can see that uh, we expect two hundred seventy-two thousand roughly in pledges to come in. It's at two twenty-six right now through today. Um, 
So, and that's about 83%. This, uh, and Rebecca tells me normally there's a, a surge at the end of the year for people who haven't completed their pledges, they'll do it in the last month. Right. So, there's, so there's a fairly good chance we'll, we'll get that covered. Uh, a lot of know for sure. A little more uncertain is this other donations. It lists uh, an annual budget of $30,000. We've only got through 17000 That's quite a gap. And I need to find out from Rebecca what's behind that. This is may reflect bequests and large donations that vary a lot from year to year. Uh, the fundraising, uh, that's 6,500 or so. That's mostly from uh, the auction, I think, and smaller items. It was budgeted 8,500, so that's not too bad. Rentals are a little bit below expected, but still pretty, you know, pretty, pretty normal. Uh, you know, but that's not anywhere near a balanced budget. And so like in here, you see this, we're already taking 25,000 out of 29,000 in the budget for, uh, from the endowment, just for this year's budget. And that's a pretty big draw that you can do that some years when they, uh, and when you have a good year in the stock market, uh, you're allowed to sort of take, take the profits and use those profits for uh, annual budgets like this. But you may not have a good a good year in the stock market every year, so that's 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 not necessarily sustainable. Just yeah, but just so everybody understands, that's not the way our endowment team works. They do about four to four and a half percent of whatever the year end balance turns out to be. So they don't they they don't go above four and a half percent historically, yes. and and have no authorization to do that. Yeah. So that, that's so that that makes it more steady, but if that's uh, if, if over the long haul that's drawing down your endowment, that's it. That's not good. If it's increasing your endowment, that's good. And I know Todd wants to work on that. He's told us about that. Yeah. Uh, the other big item is contingency. That means we have a reserve fund, and we, for sure we take it out on that. But the, the bottom line here is the, the income is 286000 up to this date, but the expenses to this date are 330000 that's about 44,000 short, 44,000 short. If you look at income to date, through expenses to date, and if you add on about maybe another uh, 25, 30,000, probably at the end of the year, our expenses would be more like 355, 360,000. And so we need to get up to there to cover our expenses. And even if we go all the way through the, get, make our pledge goal and our, donation goal will still fall somewhat short of meeting those expenses. Uh, so we'll have to, that's where the contingency comes in. We'll almost certainly have to take maybe even part, part, maybe even half of the contingency, even if things go well. And that's not desirable, again, but that's just the way it is for this budget. Yeah, I, I read the conclusions there. It is small print, but I was able to read it. And the if one can read the conclusions, they are pretty startling, just as you said, Dick. Yeah, so the, the big thing is that uh, this budget, you know, includes a uh, reduction of 25% from Todd's salary. And uh, that's, none of us view that as desirable. Uh, and even in, in the next year's budget, uh, it doesn't look like we'll be able to increase that at all or, or not very much. Uh, just because it's it's quite a gap and some expenses will be going up, uh, even though it looks like now that the pledges for next year will be a, just a little bit more than this year. I think the preliminary pledges were 282000 or something like that instead of 272000 but, oh, sure. but the bottom line is we need a lot more fundraising. And the fundraising, I, I guess at this church, pre-pandemic was much more. And my, the church I go to in Seattle, uh, you know, they had an auction was brought in about fifteen thousand dollars, and so many of us think there's a lot, a lot of room for more fundraising. Maybe a, uh, maybe not just a better auction. Maybe a, like a, a special dinner. And you know, we need some some big ticket items that will bring in more people or some some other ideas. But there's there's definitely room for a lot of improvement in fundraising. So Dick, there seems to be two issues 
maybe that we're pointing out with this report, which again is a look backward over this year. It's about this last um, in, a financial year. The one, the first one that you were pointing out at the beginning of the report is that we're not even going to meet our goals for pledge and donation and meet our expenses for this this year. Or are we, but we just have to pull it from contingency? Well, we have to pull it from contingency. Yeah, we'll meet it one way or another. That's what the contingency is for. But if we're taking money, $20,000 or even $10,000 out of contingency every, every year, uh, you know, that's right. not sustainable. You, you'd like to build, you'd like to have a very stable cash reserve, not be not be taken out of that cash reserve every year. Okay. And then the other thing is, even with the struggles to meet the budget that we outlined last year, that budget was already a $20,000 hit to, to Todd's salary. And we well, weren't fine. able to make that up for next year either. So right, right. it is a bit of a dire money picture. Yeah, that's why I say at the bottom, it's like it's going to be. Uh, it looks mm -hmm. like it's going to be a slow recovery, recovery from the uh, pre-COVID era, and it's just society has changed so much. There's more, more people just coming in by Zoom or or uh, you know live stream. They're, they're coming in, but they aren't as involved, and they mm -hmm. aren't as involved in fundraising and pledging and everything else. Doug, did you have something, Dad? No. <clears throat> Dan, you wanted to add something? Yes, I do. Uh, the society, uh, Legacy Society, will be meeting here shortly. And what we will be reporting at that is that uh, our current uh, balance uh, this this year has gone up, and it's up at $899,465, which means that we're proposing uh, a thirty-five thousand dollar donation. I see you have mm. twenty-five two hundred here listed. Is that correct? Well, that, that means the budget last year for the endowment it was twenty-nine thousand. So you're saying that would go up to thirty-five thousand? I mean, Is don't it? quote me, yeah. but that's what we're talking about at yeah. the legacy meeting coming up. So yeah, that will help you out somewhat. Yeah, it will help. Grand. It will help out. Yeah. Yeah. But Thanks. it's not going to be enough. Yeah. No, I know. But right. But if all, 10, every all the little things help out. You know, like ten thousand is ten thousand. So yeah. If if someone dies, gives us a big bequest, that would help out a lot. You see, near to year. Yeah. But some of the bequests will actually go into the endowment, not directly to the budget, too. So that that okay. varies a lot. Let's talk about that again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's an, an issue we need to talk about. Right. Thank you, Dick. Any other thoughts? And I, I think Todd at that budget meeting thought that he, he could raise more. He, he wanted to give it, he wanted to work on the endowment. He, has, yep. he said he really wanted to work on that and raise more money, uh, I guess, even from the larger community, not just from the from our <laughs> community. So I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but uh, I think he wants to work on the endowment to make to make it so that we can, if these other factors don't grow as much, we'll have we can rely on the endowment more like that. If it's four mm -hmm. or five percent every year and we get a two million dollar endowment, that that can start to make more of a difference, and we're less dependent on fundraising or pledging shortfalls and things like that. Okay. Any other last thoughts on the budget? Oh, sir, I, I had one more thing. In... Treasurer's report. What, Marilyn, did you want us to send you a copy? Yes, please. You bet. I'll yeah. do that right now. So yeah, I, I just thought of one more thing, too, is that Rebecca and I uh, talked about the fundraising. Is uh, She thought we needed to have a much stronger finance team, and we needed a really strong fundraising person on that finance team to to head things up. So we need one of our top people to work on the fundraising. Maybe we need to call it the fundraising team. Yeah, it could be called. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was the finance team. I know, and, and fundraising needs to be 
uh, a major thing. And, and right now, it's not, it's not something that's that's not my purview. It's not the purview of anyone on the team. We, we need an official position on that team of someone who's leading up the fundraising efforts and can recruit, recruit others to do the various projects and things like that. And find we need not just the auction, we need a second big fundraiser besides that too. Okay. So Dan Ekrit, did you hear that? I want you to go out and recruit us a fundraiser. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I think we should actually have a name for this. I think we should have it maybe even in our bylaws or something like that. <laughs> we, we need someone who's the fundraising chair or something like that, where you're Paul say. And we need to- Money's, that. money's and, are. And then we, we need to recruit that. Uh, that should be, as you said, it should be a, a task. Well, of Dan, to to recruit exactly. That. Dan, that's why I said to you, I didn't say you be the fundraiser guy. I said, go recruit it because you're really good at recruiting. That's yeah. what I'm pointing out. But you're I, an I excellent say we, recruiter. Let's make that permanent though. Let's put it in writing for some, some way. I'm too yeah. old that. I'm told, I see, I'm getting old. I've got my hands in too many pots. Right, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, some, some, someone said we should ask Lynn to do you know, this. So. <laughs> it would be good. Uh, how, how about our, we've got a fellow that used to be uh, uh, the head uh, in uh, a state legislature that uh, uh -huh. Is a pretty imposing guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he'd be willing to do it, but uh, he's been in politics. That's all. Politics is all about fundraising. <laughs> right? Yeah. You that know might, who I'm talking good. about? Is that King? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Joe King. Joe, Joe King. King. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's, that's a good, a good idea. Yeah, we need to have. I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> doubt if Joe would do it, but uh, be worth asking him. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, put that on your list. You it's, know it's already it's already <laughs> been suggested that we urge the next board to consider uh, updating the strategic plan and that they focus on um, fundraising. So the exactly. kind of, we can't tell them to do we can't tell the next board what to do, but we can urge them to do or suggest <laughs> that they do. And that's already been suggested in the last couple of meetings. And, and by the way, that's already in the suggested budget also that we. We we uh, we raised the like eighty five hundred to twenty thousand dollars in fundraising because a, a lot of things that's actually we think based on the other the past what happened here in the past and the other churches that's very doable but it needs to be done that's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not we not only need the fundraising we need to get more people in the church too that would right help right us. yeah yeah. We're, we're on to item seven. Yes, let's move on to item seven. Thank you, Tom. Doug, you you went to ops team this month or yeah. last, last month? No, this month. What'd you learn? Um, okay, uh, and uh, Marilyn, you've got this in an email from me. Um, so uh, that met on the 14th of May and uh, let's see, first item, generosity campaign, final result of the pledge drive uh, is $282,557. Uh, there will be accounting software changes, switching to APLOS, A-P-L-O-S, for the next fiscal year, replacing QuickBooks and Breeze, and also looking into switching our web host as well. Uh, our first interstate account has been closed and the funds transferred to our main account at STCU. Uh, problematic toilets in the men's bathroom are being replaced along with the toilet in the family bathroom due to a history of repeated clogging. Uh, sprinkler repairs are being done by Twisted Roots and Barb this year. Uh, Rebecca will ask Julianne, Donna, and Lynn Janitian to volunteer for annual meeting member check-in. And the ops team company communication policy is working. The discussion is that it's working and we'll be keeping it as it is at this point in time. That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for Doug? Or can we move on to item eight, more annual meeting stuff? 
it should be pretty quick. We have three um, bylaw amendments that we have uh, been presented with, tweaked, reviewed, and approved to be proposed by the Board of Trustees at the annual meeting. One for the Memorial Garden, and that is like a one sentence, um, <laughs> a one sentence amendment. Um, one regarding the seven principles, which are being struck from UUA language, so we're putting them into our bylaws, and one regarding public relations, um, which is only two or three lines too long, I believe, uh, as well. And what we're looking for is a volunteer from the Board of Trustees to simply read these bylaw proposals at the annual meeting. You don't have to even necessarily stand up and come to the front of the congregation. We have a portable mic and you can just, I think that's how we've done it in the past. Um, you just essentially stand up and read it. So anyway, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would be, um, I, I move that, you know, and then read it. And then the moderator takes over and asks for a second. So exactly. you don't have to deal with any of the Robert's Rules stuff. Exactly, exactly. The silence is astounding. <laughs> Betsy, did you say you, you wanted board members to do that? Yeah, it has to be board members. I did, Cindy, and you're not quite there. Because I can tell you want to volunteer. You're so <laughs> awesome. But <laughs> thanks. Yeah, we'll we'll catch you next year on that one. Well, I can maybe do it if I'm provided I'm there. I'll be coming back on the train from Portland. And sometimes those things get delayed, but if I'm there, I could do that. Well, if I, or if I or otherwise, I might be there late or something. Um, how about you, Catherine? You're pretty skilled at that. Are you going to be at the meeting? I probably will be there. Um, my concern is uh, the temperature of the day and my dog. Um, I don't even really come to church regularly in part because of my dog. Okay. Um, and uh, so uh, I will be there. Um, I'll figure out something for Lily to be able to do that. Um, maybe even if we're at the back of the room and I read it out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And I'll just be rather by zoom. So yeah. you better to have someone there as in person. And and I I will have the you know exactly what to read. Um, that's part of what I've been asked to do the last three years um, is have kind of a script for everybody so that everything falls into place fairly quickly. So we could uh, use Luba or we could use Doug or I'll be up front as the parliamentary advisor and I could do it, but it would be better if it came from the floor. I'll be glad to. I'm back yeah. up. Good. Doug will read one. I'll be there. Luba, would you like to do the Memorial Garden? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, I have some problem with my throat today. Yeah, yes. Thank you, hon. Appreciate it. Okay, so I got Luba for Memorial Garden. Um, <laughs> Doug, can I put you on the seven principles? Yeah. And then Dick, I'll put you on. Oh, wait, was it Dick or Catherine? Catherine. Uh, Catherine volunteer because she'll yeah. she, she probably will be Catherine, there. Ca yes, thank you. And Catherine, I'm, you can be public relations. And Tom and I can back anybody up. I we can read them. If it turns okay. out Dick you're on the train or <laughs> Catherine Lily, right. you know, melts down in the back or whatever. So right, right. okay. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Um okay, now which, this, which dick was that? Dick Burkhart. Actually, Dick's okay. not volunteering for any of those things. We got Luba, Doug, and Catherine. Doug. Marilyn, thanks for asking. <clears throat> okay, item number number nine. Yes, I put your name next to this, Tom. But anybody okay, um, I think many of you got the letter from the Jacksonville, Florida UU Church that um, was circulated by various means. I circulated it to my email group, which 
includes about 40 uh, UU, you know, UUCS members, but Jacksonville, Florida congregation, um, after a year's study, decided to vote 80, 80 to four against the Article Two amendments that will be at GA. And in some email exchanges uh, between members, um, I think it was Karen Dorn Steele asked whether we could do something like that vote at our congregational meeting or our annual meeting. And um, if it were on the agenda, we could um, because it, that would be advertised. So since we were going to have an agenda coming out a little bit late, and we're going to suspend the rules so we can consider a late agenda uh, notice, it could be at the prerogative of the board added to the agenda to have a vote, but we wouldn't have had any study like Jacksonville did for a, an entire year. And it might involve a prolonged discussion and um, we might have to limit the discussion in order to have a meeting concluded within our general two hour time frame. So could any you, comments from the board? Could you back up and summarize what it is that Jacksonville, Florida studied for a year and we're proposing to put on the agenda? Well, what exactly I, is that? I would defer to Dick on that because he has been intimately involved and I've been very sketchily involved because my right. life has not been allowing me that much time. Yeah, well, my understanding was they it was just ultimately a, a vote to uh, either vote for the proposed Article 2 revision or to vote against it. That was the ultimate vote. But but what of course the, the it took a year's debate to get in fact a lot of churches just taken a long time to get to that point where people knew what that even meant and and that's the issue uh, because like like one of the issues is the seven principles uh, they, they took away the seven principles but they they kind of buried them in distorted ways and and changed ways in the six values that they came up with but for right. but they did not want to keep the seven principles as a separate entity and and the big one of the big questions is why and that would be a subject of this current meeting and uh in my church in seattle we had a, a zoom meeting just the other day a couple of days ago we had about uh, maybe six well maybe eight or ten people there and we asked those questions well why did they refuse to keep the seven principles as a separate entity uh, someone said, well, you could have just improved those, and I actually proposed an improvement myself, and it, they just, it was just ignored. Yeah. So th there's, a, there's a lot of reasons behind this, and the other things that come up are like, why are these all these covenants in there? Uh, why is the word accountability in there? And, and covenants have a shady history. They've been used to justify inquisitions and all kinds of things over the years centuries you know and so and i mean they could be wonderful but they could also not be so wonderful and and so these kind of things take a lot of discussion and uh and a lot of these issues come down to issues of trust also well and, and you know from just in order to move our discussion along my opinion is that if even if we voted um as jacksonville did 80 to 4 or whatever it was it wouldn't mean anything because it isn't doesn't represent a vote unless we tell our delegates to vote a certain way. And that could be included in any kind of a motion. But um, I'm just thinking we're kind of Johnny come lately as far as uh, our congregation uh, trying to take a position on this. But well, well you, you don't have to like my saltwater church. They, they've never uh, instructed delegates how to vote before. us, So they just decided to continue that policy, let delegates vote as they want. But they're holding these, uh, and in fact, not one, they're holding another uh, discussion session so that the delegates themselves will have some idea of what other people think and, and some idea of the pros and cons and the, the underlying issues. And so we can, I, I think that to have at least some discussion in the annual meeting uh, was just an advisory vote, uh, not, not an instruction vote. I would say have the vote uh, be advisory and, and let the delegates decide how they want to vote. Uh, I have a feeling that most delegates will be, will be voting in a certain way, but, but you know, it's, 
uh, since we haven't had a year long process, it might be better just to have uh, a discussion that raised some of these issues I was talking about. And, and so people have a better understanding of what's all about. Dick, would the advisory vote, vote how would it be uh, made known at the convention? Well, it, it wouldn't be made known at the convention, but it could be made known through some of these groups. Like we found out about the uh, this uh, vote in Jacksonville at the seven principles group, uh, discussion group, and they have a pretty big list. And there's the fifth principle project. There are a number of different groups out there and there's even a, a database uh, spreadsheet where these votes are being uh, written down, whether or not they're advisory or instructions. Uh, but, but the UUA will not allow us to communicate to everyone. That's, and that's one of the biggest problems is they, they control the communications and, and, and they decide exactly what's going to be communicated to everyone. If uh, there's no avenue for us to communicate ar around that, um, it is possible to go through the UUA list of congregations. It's a very onerous project and record uh, emails for different congregations. And some people have done that, but then those congregations, you know, they can just send your email to the round file if they don't like it. Yeah. And uh, so, so there's, there's no official way to do this, but there are lots of unofficial ways to reach more people. And that does make a difference. Like so far, We've had a, this database with, I think, maybe like 10 different churches, uh, almost all of, we, of whom have voted strongly against it. Thank you, Dick, I'd suggest you go ahead and make a motion, and then, then let's about, about uh, you know, having this advisory vote at the meeting. Yeah, I'd be more comfortable with that. I just have a discussion and advisory vote. Because the key thing is so people... Yeah, can you go ahead and make a motion? Yeah, for now? Or, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, we... We, we need a motion. Right? Make a motion, and then we'll continue discussing. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll move that yeah. at the annual meeting. We have a discussion on the article, proposed Article 2, and after the discussion, have an advisory vote by the congregation, an up or down advisory vote. Would you include uh, a 20-minute time limit? That, that seems reasonable, yeah. Because I mean, we could do this for hours, because yeah. we have it, you know. A year. <laughs> <laughs> a year, a year, you see, like that, and and we can embarrass, and we could include the four amendments, uh, but that might be a little too much at this point. Well, uh, I second your original motion. Yeah, I, I think I'd mention there are four proposed amendments, and I could mention those in, in sort of the, the discussion, but that's probably too much to include an advisory vote on those four. Okay, so uh, there we have a second, so we're in discussion. I would like to repeat the motion so that I can make sure I understand what we're proposing, which is to have a 20 minute discussion at the annual meeting about the changes to Article 2 being proposed by the UUA. Is that accurate, Dick? Followed by an advisory vote on the. Followed the by an advisory vote from our congregation. Yeah, that, that would inform about the delegate. Changes. About whether or not the congregation supports these changes or not. Okay, so my big, big question is, who's going to cogently, coherently, succinctly present what these this Article 2 change is in a way that will be meaningful? And as, as you've stated many times in this discussion, it's not, and by design, it sounds like, the UUA has made it yeah. serpentine and circuitous and hidden and... Yeah. Well, I, 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 I could do that in, in two stages. First, I could just describe exactly what the changes are. And, and that would that, that itself is going to take at least five minutes, probably, maybe more. Uh, I can help but, you with a, with a slide or two if you want. Yeah, to and, 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 you know, like I have a, there's, there's a printout I have, which you can look at online, which has a side by side, the old and the new. Yep. Yep. And so I, I could... I could describe, summarize those changes. That's a good way to start out. And yep. then the second part of the discussion could be, what are the issues underlying those changes? What, what's what's the real story under underneath those changes? What, what's the, where's the controversy? And that's where it gets very interesting. And and you, you're well and, and, and knowledgeable and can do that for us. Yeah, I can do both parts of it, yeah. Uh, all right. Great. Well, 
in the process process of of debate i'm going to vote against this i don't think it's in the light of all the stuff that goes on in our annual meeting and our loss of people in attendance um that i don't think this is an important issue for our church so i i'm going to be voting against it the motion you mean this motion to talk about it at the annual meeting And why, why could you, I don't know, would you mind elaborating on that a little, Tom? Well, I just don't think it's an important enough issue in the big picture for our congregation and our church. The effect of it, if we vote, the effect of it is going to be very negligible and it's going to take up, uh, I think, valuable time for things that pertain to our church. Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, I I guess what I'm saying now is that this second half of the discussion, where we get to the underlying issues, will say a great deal about the relationship between the UA and this church. Well, that's a whole other issue, which but, we will debate at some time. You no, know, but that's part of this. That's going to be part of this discussion on the, on Article Two. You know, this the relationship between the UA and this church is is intricately involved with this this Article Two, the rewriting of Article Two, and what it means or may not mean. <laughs> I see. Yeah. You know, you know, like, like congregational polity is a big issue with many people in this article too. That's 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 very much involves this church. Could this church remain in the UUA uh, and not be subject to various kinds of controls and things like that? That's a lot of people are really worried about that, and, and there's a lot of uncertainty about that. Catherine, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I I think that uh, a, a lot of our church and please anybody who has information that is not in line with what I'm saying, correct me. But I think a lot of our church is already kind of checked out of the UUA <laughs> of being part of the UUA. And I know we've been talking about this for a long time, having more of a discussion about whether or not it really serves our interest to be part of the UUA at a, a congressional meeting and this seems to be you know just one part of uh the reasons why we may not want to and so i i see this as being useful to do this um to have a 20 minute discussion just if only to really bump it up in people's awareness i'm i'm starting to think that think along with Tom. You're right, Catherine. We've checked out of the UUA. A lot of people have checked out of it and we're just getting dragged back. (laughs) And it's the opportunity cost for opportunity cost, meaning we're spending time and energy thinking about all the crazy nonsense that's going on with the UUA rather than how we need to make money and keep our organization going. Or NAUA, um, you know, successfully moving forward or whatever else we need to do as a congregation. Just don't want to spend any more time on it. On the other hand, Dick, if if it doesn't turn out that this motion passes and we add it to the agenda, you are obviously very knowledgeable about it and should, you know, discuss it with the delegate team that you're putting together. It's essentially a protest vote delegate team, right? I mean, that's why we're... Yeah why we have it, these folks that are interested in going just to make that statement. Well, but, but I, I give an example of what <clears throat> a lot of people don't know. There's They've reworded the very first principle, inherent worth <clears throat> and dignity uh, of every person, and kind of buried it in one of the values. <clears throat> Instead of the word worth, they use the word worthiness. Worthiness, think about that. And that word I said, well, what's wrong with worth? It seems kind of awkward. Inherent worth and worthy inherent worthiness of every individual. Where did that come from? I, so, I, anyone have any idea where that comes from? Yeah. I, I hate to do this, but I call. No, the but question. but that's the kind of thing we we'll discuss. Allowed to do that. I call yeah. the question. It takes a two-thirds vote, which would be five of us. Can I offer a suggestion? Yes. What if it was um, an opportunity? after directly after the um the annual meeting to have a discussion group and not be part of the meeting formally i don't think anyone's going to want to stick around that long <laughs> I, 
May I say something? Just as a congregate. I, I, I called the question. We need to have a vote. Okay. Well, okay. well let's, some, if someone else wants to talk. No, talk. I've called the question. Okay. Parliamentary okay. procedure. I'm okay. the one who's do it. I'm doing it so we can okay. get on to the other parts of the agenda. So please, uh, would you call for a vote? We don't need a second. How does so, that work, Tom? So so is, anybody, anybody can just shut off quit, uh, discussion by calling the question. Excuse me. We 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 do need a second you for your call, second, and you need a two thirds vote on it too. Yeah, yeah. To, to stop talking about this. Is that yeah, we need a right. vote to stop talking. Do you want to keep talking, folks, or do you want uh, to stop talking? That's what's on the table right now. Who wants yeah, to talking? <laughs> Who wants what? To keep talking about okay. this motion. I did not quite understand what the people were talking about. And maybe from my personal perspective, um, some clarification would be important. Then would you like to keep talking, Luba? Yeah. Okay. So, same here. I think as long as people want to are interested in it. Catherine, is your hand up? Nope, I was voting. Sorry. I was voting to say I was voting to say yes, let's keep talking. Okay. I can't tell if you're voting to because say because that's not the same as voting on the, the question though. No. What the, the motion on the floor right now, if we're Tom said stop talking. I'm I, I, yeah, but for the for that motion, if you vote yes, you're voting to stop talking. That's right. Yeah. So, no. So, no, no, I understood whether we vote for keeping. Yeah. No. Clarify. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's what I that's thought. A, tell them to be quiet and tell us what we're doing. <laughs> it's, a vote to cut off, it's a vote to cut off debate. If you say yes, then we're stopping yeah. debate and we'll vote on the main motion. Okay. okay. So, so I vote no on, on the question. Yeah. I, vote the, no. I, vote, I vote no on stopping the debate. I vote, I vote no. no. That's three. I no. Vote. I no. Vote yes. I vote yes. I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> so no. we take two thirds vote, and uh, we don't have a two thirds vote, so we keep talking. Right. Okay, <laughs> just a little bit more. <laughs> I, I have a question. I, you don't get to vote though, Justin. I, I just first. did <laughs> not yet. <laughs> oh, I, I thought I heard you, but I was like, oh, Justin, not yet. <laughs> That's okay. So the question is: It is uh, Church in Jacksonville. Is it, is it still a member of the UUA, or is it planning to drop out? Good question. Don't know. No, it's a good. It's a member of good standing. It's a member of good standing, and it's not. It's not planning to drop out currently. No, no. Okay, so, but Thank but you. it's just. I think it has a minister who. Uh, a lot of churches have ministers who are willing to talk about this. Many have ministers who are not willing to. Okay, so since we extended debate, um, and Doug has his hand up, Sue, so I'm going to go to him first as a board member. Go ahead, Doug. So, so uh, uh, I, I'm I'm with Catherine, I think, uh, who said that it seems like to me this is an opportunity to move the process along of the church, probably ultimately leaving the UUA, and and uh, it seems to me it's an appropriate time to actually air this whole question, because uh, you know we, otherwise we're just putting it off, and I don't know when I don't know when else except when Todd you know rails. Uh, uh, I don't know when else it really gets uh, dealt with. So I, 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 unless Tom, you can come up with a really good reason to me for me that uh, we we shouldn't look at this uh, uh, on uh, June ninth, then I, I'd like to just spend just a lousy twenty minutes. Unless, well, unless you know the meeting is already too long because of the agenda. Well, you've changed the subject now. If you want to vote on whether or not we're going to leave UUA. That was discussed a few board meetings ago, and it was generally thought that we would wait till after GA to see what GA did with regard to this amendment, and then and then bring it up if we if in fact the amendment passes, then we would then that would be something that could come before the congregation, but it would have to be a congregational vote at a special meeting or else the annual meeting in 2025. Uh, okay. I think Doug's just saying, though, that this is just part of the, I think, mm -hmm. not necessarily in conflict with what you just described about how we would exactly get out of the UUA, that this was just another educational opportunity mm -hmm. and yeah. at an annual meeting to kind of 
get that. I, I, no, I agree to that. Yeah, it's it's a way of getting a sense of the congregation. I for personally, I'd really like to have a sense of the congregation before it's even discussed really that much further. Like, what is the sense of the congregation and their feeling about? Um, the direction that the UUA is going and whether whether we ought to be looking at eventually seriously deciding whether we leave or not. Can yeah. I speak now? Yes, Sue, go for it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a congregant, uh, I think this is would take much more time. I don't I do not want to see this at this meeting. I would like very much to be in on some education like this and talk about this. This is what I've been waiting for for months and months. It's a little late now to bring it up at the um, annual meeting, but please put it on your agenda to have something happen to educate us. It's a sensitive subject and I don't know when we're not going to be sensitive to it. So it's got to be discussed at some time, but not at this meeting. Hmm. I don't think we have enough time. 20 minutes, we're hardly going to get anybody's opinion. Mm -hmm. an, an option here that we've used before is what we call a con congregational conversation, which is to call a meeting. It's not an official meeting, so it doesn't need proper notice and doesn't have to jump through all the hoops. And we've done that in the past on some issues. Um, and we could do that and it would be informational and there could be an even advisory vote of the people who bothered to attend, and then the board could use that as some guidance for how to proceed on the actual issue of leaving UUA, if that's the more important issue. Maybe have a sign-up sheet for people interested in that. At the annual meeting you're talking about, Marilyn? Yeah, just introduce the topic give a brief summary, and then for further dis those interested in further discussion, let us know. Good idea. That would Good certainly night. provide some feedback, valuable feedback of how many people are interested. You're going to have, I hope, a good attendance at the meeting. Yeah. I'd almost like to have, you know, a show of hands of how many people are interested in having a conversational meeting about the subject in the near future. That that would, you know, that would give me some sense of uh, interest or direction without spending a whole lot of time on it. As opposed to, as opposed to um, a debate for 20 minutes or people expressing their opinion for 20 minutes, just saying that these are some things that we're thinking about how many people might be interested in a, a conversational uh, educational meeting on this subject. So, so that suggests a totally different motion than what's on the Okay. Floor. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right. I'll shut up. I mean, it's a reasonable suggestion, but it, it yeah. isn't addressing the motion on the floor. Okay. Got it. Uh, Dick, would you in be interested in amending your motion to say that you would give a, what, five-minute, ten-minute presentation, and then just let us know who's interested and, and no no vote? That's possible, too, as, an, as a sort of a, a bid or maybe an introduction to the conversation you're talking about, saying the board is considering the conversation. Okay. Uh, here's, here's sort of the, the outline of uh, what this Article Two thing is about? Here's Some something that's happening at the at the convention. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we certainly wouldn't have time to discuss all the issues. But the question is, how much could we discuss in twenty minutes? I could probably give an introduction in in five minutes or something. But then we wouldn't actually get into any of the the really interesting issues that underlie all this because the the interesting issues are very carefully hidden. I'll tell you that. <sighs> Right. Very and carefully so, hidden. Right. Well, could you do in 10 minutes? Could you cover it and just, just as well, a heads in, up? In, in, in 10 minutes, I could, probably five minutes, I could just introduce what the thing is about, the changes are. In t five more minutes, I could at least introduce some of the key controversies, some of the hidden, the things that are hidden in there that are very controversial. Are, are some, we talking some teasers. Teasers. Are, are we Jesus. talking about voting down the motion and making another motion to just have a 10-minute presentation 
on the issues involving Article 2. Well, we could, he could just amend his motion. No, you can't do that. You know, the, the amended, that's not amending the motion. That's totally substituting another motion. Just vote yeah, the motion yeah. down if that's what you all want, and then have uh, a motion for Dick to present a 10 minute presentation about Article 2. Well, yeah, I think I think if the, mo if the, the mover wants to amend, it's, I mean, it's instead of from a 20 minute to a 10 minute introduction without an advisory vote. That's the basic difference, and, and we could do we could do that. I think without voting it down or up. Who seconded I mean, the motion? Because yeah. you need approval of your second. Who seconded the motion? I think I did. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So so, so I, I can amend it to have a. I could give a oh. ten minute introduction, but without an advisory vote, and to invite people to sign up for a, a conversation in the future. Are you amending it? Yes. Yeah. I second. And you seconded it. Any other discussion on the amended motion to have a presentation at the annual meeting on Article 2 at the GA? L limited to 10 minutes. Limited to 10 minutes. Right, right. Mm. No vote, just sort of a presentation. Yeah, heads up. Yeah, well, an overview, but without the vote. And I think it's a great idea. idea. Okay. Let's vote. To have a 10 minute presentation. Yep. Okay. Who's in favor of adding this to the agenda? Wait, you you cannot vote, Justin. You're not a board member. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can, you can raise your hand, not Justin. Yet. We're not counting your vote. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I voted. Okay. So, uh, Catherine Luba. I'm I'm, um, I'm voting no. Okay. I'm okay. I'm voting no and want to be recognized as such. Well, don't put your hand up because we're voting for yes right now. Oh, All those were... in favor of the motion to add 10 minutes to the uh, annual meeting ag agenda. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Four in favor. All those opposed. Two. Did you get that, Marilyn? Majority rules, so. Yeah, uh, majority rules, so. Yeah. Yep, got it. Okay. Where are we going to put that on the agenda? Ugh. I'll figure it out at the end. Yeah. First. Since yeah, it's not a crucial. Put, put it later in case I have a delay in my train. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those trains, those trains, Dick. I'm telling you. Oh, okay. yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> This is not It'll probably be okay, but there's no guarantees. <laughs> yeah. I'll put it probably before item eight. Right, right. <laughs> the copy of the agenda. It's the very yeah, last thing. It's supposed to get in, I think, at 11.45, which will give me 45 minutes, but you can, you can never tell in these things. Uh -huh. uh, it's usually on time, but once in a while, it'll be two hours late. <laughs> okay, we got about 11 minutes left in our allotted time team. So... Um, Left on the agenda is the email policy amendment or rescinding the email policy. So mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the amendment is just to kind of make it consistent with the amendment we made last month in April to take something out about uh, enforcement, I guess. Well, There's something in there about an enforcing person or something to that effect, right, yeah. Don? Yeah. yeah, and what, what I'm uh, suggesting in order to be consistent with what we did before when we eliminated a statement about you know, violations resulting in a disciplinary action, it would be to strike another statement that says, uh, that the full statement currently says, board members are encouraged to report any use of email they believe to be in violation of this policy to the board chair or designated compliance officer. Since we don't have a compliance officer, uh, I would urge us to strike that until we do have a com compliance officer. And I would move that that be stricken from what is um, the approved policy as of last week. Okay, seconded. Any other discussion about removing those four or five words about a compliance officer? That's good to me. Good. Okay, all those in favor of removing the four words? Uh, looks unanimous. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you.
now that we've amended our email policy, Tom wants to talk about getting rid of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm I move. Uh, and this takes um, a two thirds vote that we rescind the policy and have a process in which the board examines the issue as to the need and specific uh, requirements. And would need a second in order to allow me to present why. Second. Okay. The reason that I have more trouble with this, as I as I worked on it, it seemed like it was uh, a solution, and to one degree, a solution uh, looking for a problem. Um, I learned f first of all when I did start an email exchange, um, not as a board member but as a person, uh, about the issue of. Um, whether or not unfulfilled pledges due to a death could be uh, recovered in some way. And there were some 21 participants in that, ranging from bylaw possibilities to no bylaw possibilities to some kind of an administrative walk around and ultimately ending up that the, um, that the Legacy Society is going to discuss that to see if they have any recommendations for the board um, I got um, a comment from Todd that I would violated the email policy. And I pointed out to him that there was nothing, that I was not doing anything as a board. And in fact, all the board members were included in that conversation. And then I also heard, which was totally uh, shocking to me, that this policy came from the shared ministry team and that was not brought forward. And I, it just seems like there was, I was just uncomfortable the way all this happened. And it seemed like nobody consult if the shared ministry team did this and presented it to the board that at least I as a board member was never interviewed. And it seems like this is a board issue that the shared ministry team has jumped in on. And I think it should be the board that looks at itself and decides whether there's a problem and if so, how to solve the problem. So that's why I, and moving to rescind it and to have the board study it themselves to see what the issues are and then to come up with a policy as needed. I I think there are, there are two main issues. Um, one one issue is to prevent the um, the 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 sort of small number of people that are in the board kind of coming up with an agenda that they're pushing forward. And the other is um, the voluminous amount of email and, you know, particularly you, Tom, I mean, on the one hand, I really appreciate all of the work and the research you do on a bunch of topics. But on, on the other hand, it can be sort of exhausting to be going through not only your emails, but another person's response and maybe a, a, a congregant's problem with the process. And it, it just seems like it, it stirs up a lot of uh, not not the yeah. clearest uh, decision making process a, potentially a third issue with um email is to avoid even a a hint of non-transparent um, right. activities and that even though I hear what you're saying, Tom, about we didn't come up with the email policy. I think this is what you're saying. We didn't. The board didn't originate it. It originated elsewhere. I still think it's a good policy to avoid any hint of conducting board business outside of board meetings, even if it is constraining, even if it is slow sometimes. And like Catherine said, email is a not an awesome way to get decisions or consume information in the way that you know we're directed to do as this elected body so i would be in favor of keeping it if we want to amend it that's okay um or amend it further that's okay but i think it is a good good policy i one comment i just thought of it seemed like when i read the email policy it seemed pretty reasonable but then i just thought of well suppose there's a uh 
a subgroup of the board that's been asked to work on some issue, like come up with some recommendation to research it, come up with proposed policy, and they just do email among themselves. I think there needs to, and that that could be legitimate, uh, as long as it's, it's a, a more designated work group, you might say. So I, I think, I think maybe that I, that does happen, doesn't it? I thought that was perfectly yeah. legitimate. Yeah, well, that, that, that maybe needs to be clear though that if if the board designates a yeah. work group to work on something that they could do by email among themselves, for example, if it's just two or three people. Well, that that's already in the bylaws that the board has the authority to set up um, such subcommittees as it needed. They can't make decisions on behalf of the board, but they can right. then report back to the board. All that is common practice. Um, but but then, then I just thought that needs to be sort of clarified and in, in, in and in, 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 you know when we consider this email policy. Doug. I'm interested in what uh, Tom said about, you know, a solution looking for a problem or whatever, however he put it. Uh, so when when uh, has there been a, a real problem and why uh, that that was caused by, uh, you know, board members uh, uh, communicating? Oh, in, by email, and, by email yeah. in the and, board, and, in the board that preceded uh, um, that overturned with 2019. In 2019-20, there was a board that did all kinds of business that had yeah. to do that was done in email. Yeah, but the current the current I've been involved as a parliamentary advisor and attended almost every board meeting for four years, and the board has uh, there's never been a decision made by the board that I'm aware of that's been outside of a meeting. Have there been Have there been studies done? Have there been research done brought to the board? But I don't think any of us would participate in, in some clandestine, undercover, no. dark room action. And that's what this seems to imply, like it's trying to keep people from doing that. And that's a no-brainer. No. Yeah, it seems to me. Can I say more? Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm really hearing wisdom in what Tom is saying, and uh, you know, it's like if it hadn't been a problem for four years, why do we need a rule? R rules are are just a pro they just make our job harder. They make our meetings longer. If we can't just do good old communication between ourselves uh, in between meetings, uh, I, I I just don't see the problem, and I'm I'm in favor of uh, of abolishing it and 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 then then looking at it. I like Tom's suggestion. Or and then writing our rewriting our own email policy because it isn't good policy to do business in emails. It just isn't. It's well, not a good. It's not a clan. It's not a. We're not we're not talking case. about doing business in emails. Talking about or sharing even, information, because, or even form forming opinions and having discussions in email, because the whole congregation is not party to it, and we're having a back and forth about policies, and it's not in front of everybody. It's not in part of the meetings, and it informs our decision making. That's why we don't do it in email. Well, I'm, you know, just in response to that, Betsy, um, the board is elected to look after the affairs in fantastic and great detail and oversee this. And to think that the congregation needs to be involved in everything that we do is just unrealistic. Otherwise, we might as well have a monthly congregational meeting. Didn't say they needed to be involved. We need to be transparent about our decisions and our yeah. thoughts and our back and forth. We we are. We've always been transparent and made no decisions that haven't been in an open board meeting, just as this discussion is going on now. Yep. Yep. But uh, I'm thinking as an example, uh, you know, if Tom wants to work on a bylaw, the board could say, oh, okay, you you be in charge of work on that bylaw. And he can he could circulate by email different proposals or wordings and we could get back in touch with him and then and then he could come back to the board for a full board discussion i mean that's that's the way i think things should work there is a role for email uh, on subgroups who want to come up with a uh, proposal because that's what they're working on the problem with that is, is that he has to wait until there's a meeting and a subgroup gets you know we have to go through the process of creating a subgroup when all he really wants to do is just 
you know, work on something. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it just makes things clumsy in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I think the main problem is that um, items can come up, can like bubble up into, um, bu bubble up into, you know, main agendas for the board to take on things that, um, maybe only a very small percentage of uh, the congregation is really interested in, but they're really hotly engaged in an email that's going around by one or two board members. And then it, it I guess that's the thing is that it, 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 it then requires, you know, all the board members to keep a uh, minute attention going on all the time to what's what's happening in the email about this issue or that issue where we're not talking about it together but no decisions are being made captain until we get together no i i, I understand that but even though the decisions aren't being made the opinions are being formed by a coalition of one or two board members and uh, maybe several interested parties in the congregation that uh, really kind of want to derail the main board business that we're trying to achieve because somebody has a pet issue. That's what I see as a potential problem, you know, even if no decisions are made. And it's just, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I, I, I'm not sure what the best way to address uh, congregational issues are um, but I just I think w with email among a small percentage of people and a small percentage of board members might might not be the best way still so I'm sorry if I made that more complicated than it deserved to be so just in, any other discussion? The motion on the table right now is to remove email policy we voted in, I think, last month. Yes, that would, that's that's essentially to 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 re, I, I had I made it a little bit more than that to rescind it and to at a later point um, formula look at and formulate as needed. Um, uh, more workable or another policy. What would a workable policy look like? That's what we would have to talk about. <laughs> What's not workable about the policy we have? And it doesn't really, well, as, as was pointed out, um, it didn't really resolve the issue of one or two board members being involved in email conversations with other people in the in the congregation. It essentially says you have no right to talk about anything to other congregational members. And it didn't cover texts and it didn't cover personal conversations, which are just as important, if this is important at all, are just as important. So as as I pointed out to Todd when he said, I don't think you I think you're under the email Board, poly, board email policy, and I responded back, that's a board policy to keep the board in line and not making decisions. And it doesn't apply to me as an individual member or even as a trustee. And he backed off and said that he basically agreed, which says to me that he was kind of agreeing that whatever was intended by that board policy um, didn't cut it. So you don't like the policy that we have because it's too constraining on an individual to email, well, it, it pertains to the board, which by implication is the trust is the trustees. But he essentially says to me as a trustee that I cannot communicate by email with congregational members about issues that may be important to the congregation, even though I'm allowed to talk about them and exchange texts for them. I think you may have changed my mind, Tom. Actually, by what you're saying, that I I do think there there. There needs to be the individual freedom to have open conversations with whoever we want to be talking with. And I guess I would, you know, I can foresee a, a, a future with a different email policy that basically just says, um, you know, 
board members aren't expected to keep up on this in between in between meetings or something um it 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 but but i i do think you know just as members of the church we should be free to discuss with anybody what our thoughts are as long as we're not making decisions and as long it doesn't pro excuse me catherine i whipped out the email policy to have a look at i think we're having an interpretation um kind of issue rather than with the rule itself and because there is a is item four first bullet board members may share personal updates or general information related to church life or their individual participation in a personal capacity via email just marking it um uh what does it say clearly be marked as personal opinions and not represent or imply board decisions and isn't that what so i mean we yes. already had that in here that, yeah. It's You're not, right. It wouldn't shut you down, Tom, from, you know, writing emails to the entire congregation with your opinions or thoughts or, you know, soliciting well, stuff. It doesn't, you, it doesn't do that. I can tell you, I got beat up by one of the members of the shared ministry team saying I clearly had violated the intent of what they had written up and proposed to the board. And, um, to put it mildly, uh, I could use a word that begins with P, but I'll just say it ticked me off. Because that's You're totally, not... totally peeved. <laughs> yeah, right. Totally because, peeved. Yeah. I served on boards. I've served as on boards in which, now, admittedly, it was during COVID and under declared emergency by the governor of Arizona. We operated for a year and a half by email, electing officers, changing bylaws, changing policies. And we engaged the entire membership, which was over 250 people larger than our church. And, and the email is such a useful tool for developing points of view that actually then the policy making body and, and ultimately the entire electorate operated under. So, you know, part of the reason is I'm very comfortable doing that and know when it's the time and opportunity for the policy making body to make the decisions and avoid um, the appearance of um, lack of transparency. But that's just where I'm at. Right, and that's clear. It's a comfortable medium for you, and it is not a comfortable medium for a lot of other people. And I guess that is a point um, yeah. about email. It is not a comfortable medium um, for deliberation or debate or it's just- well, true, true, not deliberation and not debate. Absolutely right. Deliberation is a pretty broad word, Tom. It is a very broad word. If you're just talking, essentially, you're deliberating. That's, <laughs> that's what it means. So, I mean, anyway. I don't understand, if I may ask. Sure. I don't understand the difference in communication by email versus verbally, like meeting people, talking in the church. And um, what is the big issue about the rules of communicating by email versus oral conversation? Yeah, that's that's a good point. I thought I've been thinking about this too. Is that it should be perfectly legitimate for <clears throat> like someone in the congregation to contact a board member about a certain issue and say these are my concerns, and the board member could respond. You know, this is I uh, to ask them more questions about. I'll say with tell them whether or not the board is has any position on that or what the situation is. Uh, I think that kind of, and that's more than just information. It's actually having a conversation, like you say, in person, where you, uh, you, you get a sense that somebody in the congregation has an issue, you try to understand it, uh, you try to co convey it, say, well, I'll bring this up at the board if you think it's significant. Um, and that should be legitimate. And, and you should be able to do that in person or by, by email, but that's not making a decision. It's just sort of like raising an issue and trying to understand it and, and trying to understand the different points of view and that kind of thing. What, what you just talked about, Jake, is is uh, one of the, the things that some board members have felt uncomfortable with in the past, which is that sometimes there'll be congregants that will try to enlist a board member as their advocate, as a way to uh, pressing something sort of outside of board meetings to get somebody to advocate for them. And I think, you know, really what board members 
probably ought to do is to say, this is something you feel strongly about. Come come to the next board meeting and present this. Yes. Yeah, and, that's, a good, that's a good response. Right. Yeah. And, and in yes. fact, I and probably others have done that a number of times saying that's an issue that needs to come before the board. Or as Dick has pointed out, I'll say, hey, there's a board policy that says this, this, and this. Or I'll say, uh, there's a bylaw that addresses that. Here's the bylaw, and I'll copy it out of the bylaws, or I'll copy it out of the board policy, and say, here's the issue. If you have a problem with it, you need to bring it to the board. So, you know, oh. how do you do that? Verbally, text, or email? Yeah, I think that I read that email policy. I think that email policy you have could be a little clarified to allow the process that I suggested you just talked about. But do we want to throw it all the way all together and start from scratch and do it ourselves because it's not shared ministry coming up with it? Now, it came across to me as that well, just information back of you know, and this is a little more information. It's sort of setting the stage for a debate because the debate involves different points of view and they have to be presented and, have to, and that kind of thing. And also, I would like to point out that we are 12 minutes past our um, meeting time. So, do you guys want to keep going on this topic? <laughs> Continue discussion. Well, or have a motion. Yeah, there is a motion. We I can mean, vote have a motion, vote. And it takes uh, two thirds approval to rescind it. So that would be how many board members we have here? Uh, we have six because we don't have Lily. Right. So six. I figured that out before that it still takes five uh, with uh, two thirds. So, okay. So are we ready to vote then? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so so what are we vote, voting on now? What's that, Dick? What are we voting on? The yeah, yeah. I was going to restate it for you. We're yeah. voting to rescind the email policy that we approved in April. And and revisit it. And revisit it. Right? And revisit. Right. In the light of the discussion we just had. Yeah. It, it takes 4.02 members. So that means we have to bounce to five. I, I don't I, I don't think it makes sense to rescind something with nothing decided about what we're going to do. So at least I know I'm I, I'm not voting to rescind it at this point. I, I am not voting to rescind. Well, I the motion did include that we would that it would be something the board should take up at a later at a later later date. I don't know whether you that was in your repeated part or not, Betsy. So anyway, I guess there's two people against, so it doesn't, it won't pass. Mm -hmm. So the email policy, I'm you can I'm come at this. it again. You can come at it again next month, Tom, with a different proposal. I'm not going to get involved unless we decide at some point that the board's going to take this on and um, the board, the way, the way it's supposed to be interpreted, according to the people on the shared ministry team, um, I'm going to have to give serious consideration whether I could even continue on the board. That's I, I, think, I think what the, the shared ministry uh, team said to you was probably just in error and, and, and didn't reflect what the, what the policy really is. Yeah, that's, it, that's, thank you, Catherine. Sorry, Catherine, go ahead, finish. No, that's that. That was just my my impression is that that uh, who, whoever made the statement, I, I think they were just in error about what the what the policy is right now. So um, I, I'm comfortable with having things stay as they are right now. But I'm also, uh, you know, I'm very open to the idea of discussion at you know a, a later date about about what what do we really want as a substitute for that email policy if we don't like the email policy. But I don't want to rescind it without having something else in place. Good to me. Do we want to take a vote so that it's more clear for Maryland? Those in favor of rescinding the email policy One, two, two in favor. Those opposed to rescinding the policy. One, two, and 
two abstentions. It looks no three oh. in favor. Luba voted uh, in favor of not rescinding. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, boy, I hope that's clear for you later, Marilyn. <laughs> One yeah. abstention. It looks like. Okay, team. I think that's it for our agenda for tonight. Um, I think the second meetings. Oh yes, thank you, Tom. Um, yeah, I think next month's meeting is on June twenty second. No, the that's the executive. That's the executive. Did I? Oops, I'm sorry. June twenty second is executive. Thank you. And the twenty sixth is the meeting. Any problems or issues with those dates? And would someone like to volunteer? Thank you, Luba, for doing it. Um, this month, if someone like to volunteer for being on the floating executive committee for agenda setting on June 22nd? Well, by that time, we'll have two new board members. No, they don't take effect till July. No, they, yeah, yeah. Hey, Catherine, you want to do it? It's your last, uh, it's your last, you and I are off <laughs> at the end of this. I'm yeah. going to be traveling by then. Oh, okay. I'll be off and traveling. Well, I will too, technically, but I can't let that stop me from the <laughs> to travel to. Uh, June twenty second is Saturday. Did I get that wrong? June twenty sixth. <laughs> June twenty sixth is Wednesday. June. Oh, you're right. You're right. Nineteenth, guys. I did. Oh. I got that wrong. Thank oh, you, Nineteenth. Yeah. <laughs> and we we usually are somewhat a little flexible. Um, 19th, 20th. I yeah. would I would volunteer to do it on the 19th if okay. Um, if if I if I were to resign, it wouldn't be until July one any, anyway. So I would volunteer to do it. Um. All right. Thank you. Okay. Who is the board president after you leave, Betsy? Well, Doug's the vice president. But you know what we did this year, Sue was <laughs> um we just it I think we we roped Doug into that and didn't say. That means you have to be president next year. We just elect officers at the be we did this year. We elected officers at the beginning of the board year. We so. changed the bylaw to eliminate that the vice president is president elect. Okay, we changed the bylaw to do it, Sue. So not only did we just do <laughs> we have bylaws to support our our action. Say, say, <laughs> say that again, Tom. Well, the bylaws said for eons uh, that the vice president was president elect. And when we redid, revised the bylaws um, two years ago, completely revised them, we eliminated that because it was impractical. Yeah, what if your right. vice president died in office? Right. Yeah. So just so everybody knows, I will not be the next president. <laughs> and so uh, the, the search is on. Is that why you had him repeat that, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> just good, good to have things real clear. Search <laughs> on. Well, as Todd told me, it's really just about facilitating meetings. So you're making, you know, an agenda. It's not, you're not president of the church. So it's not well, an say You've done a good job. Oh, well, thanks, Dick. Really? <laughs> Learned yes. thing along the way. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, guys? Did I miss anything? <clears throat> we ready to adjourn? We're a little. Well, I little... do have one question. I had one thing that. I did want to bring up, but I won't make you stay. But how do I get it discussed when that you guys have so much to talk about? And um, how do you get on the agenda, Sue? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. There. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, don't send an email. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. So do I make a phone call? You can definitely that was a joke. You can definitely send okay. an email. You can definitely send an email. Yeah. Or okay. make a phone call. I'll do that. Or text. Because I'm not sure. I'm going to be on a cruise ship when you meet next. So I'll okay. have to see how you discuss it. But uh, well, anyway. we record we record these meetings so yeah. you can you can watch our shenanigans later. So, okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Send it on. Okay. Anybody else? Hey. Gavel's coming down. Okay. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.